Welcome to the Maximizing the Offseason series. Today, we're going to be covering the first lesson in a group of videos that is going to cover how to make the most out of your offseason and adding tissue to your physique. So today, we're going to be covering why gaining excess fat in the offseason won't accelerate your gains. So we have to answer the question, what is the main offseason issue that we see? And when we look at that, the primary issue is you just want to eat everything in sight. We have to try to get as much food down as possible. It turns into this seafood diet. And as long as that weight on the scale is moving up, no matter how fast it's moving up, you're doing your job in regards to all season. So just like our friend here, you eat because you're unhappy with your physique. You want to get bigger. And then the all season gets to the point where you're so fat, you're just unhappy and you continue to eat uh, because of the results. So when we look at making the most out of this all season phase, we need to actually go about it in a logical way in order to maximize the rate at which we add tissue. So how do we do that? How do we accrue tissue across an all season phase and what variables lead to that? The first one is going to be a caloric surplus. And this caloric surplus is going to be made of the total day to day intake and the body composition that you're at, because Obviously, someone who is extremely lean right after post-show, they're not going to have much of a contribution from body fat storage, but they're going to create mostly the surplus from a nutrition standpoint. And then as body fat accrues, obviously, we can tap into that as energy stores. And so we need to understand that the surplus that provides an athlete with the ability to accrue tissue is going to come from a combination of the day-to-day -day intake and the body composition that athlete is at. The next one's going to be progressive training. So what makes up a progressive stimulus? That's going to be mechanical tension. And so mechanical tension is going to be not only the weight on the bar or the machine, it's going to be how we execute that pattern and apply that load to provide tension across the tissues. We need to make sure that this is progressive in nature over time by either being able to provide a higher and higher stimulus um, or providing more of that total stimulus by being able to handle slightly higher volumes within the training block. And we can do this via both progressions from a logbook perspective and progressions from a total sets performed across the week per body part. Recovery capacity, a very undervalued aspect of making the most of your all season. You need to be sleeping and have consistent sleep habits. Make sure you're going to bed at the same time and you're waking up at the same time in order to set your day where your body knows when it's time to sleep and you're getting high quality sleep alongside enough sleep to keep you moving. This will also start to play into stress management and making sure that you're capable of managing life's daily factors. The higher the stress, the harder it is to adapt to the training stimulus that you're providing because you're taking away from your recovery capacity to adapt to the training stimulus. And the last piece is going to be hydration and nutrition parameters, making sure that you're consistent with those because those are going to largely contribute to your ability to provide a progressive stimulus week to week. We need our nutrition and our hydration to be on point all the days leading up into the next training session where if you guys have done this before where you have a day that the hydration is just not there either you're too busy you're out doing whatever it may be and it slips your mind you know that it not only going to affect that day of training that day a lot of times it's going to affect that next day as well so we need to be making sure that from a recovery standpoint you are taking care of those so that you can continue to provide that progressive stimulus that leads to more hypertrophy now the last one is pds everyone's favorite topic and this is going to be pd deployment in a super physiological state whether that be androgenic or non-androgenic and using synergies alongside that now this is something that varies so much across different people with different experience levels and where they're at. We're not going to actually be diving into mapping out the PED portion today. Uh, just understand that that's a big contributing factor to the recovery capacity for an athlete. So what makes a successful all season and what does that look like? So what I've done is I've put together a case study here of Justin so you guys can see what makes up a successful all season and what you should be looking for. And this case study is here to show you what you should expect from a rate of gain and how much surplus you should expect to need in order to maximize that rate of muscle gain. Most athletes are going to fall in that 0.25 to 0.5% increase per week when in regards to body weight on the scale. Obviously, the more advanced you are, the closer to the 0.25% you're going to land. And that's going to come from the surplus that's created with food. Now, what I like to do in order to illustrate this point is to kind of run you through a mental exercise with some of the numbers below. So if one pound of muscle equals about 2,600 kcals, we can assume 
with some fat accrual that 3,500 is probably going to take place to make sure that we do add that pound of tissue. If you spread that 3,500 kcal surplus across a 30 day time period, that's only an extra 120 kcals per day. When we look at the total surplus per day across the entire month. Now, this doesn't mean that each week you're only adding 120 calories to your plan. You're going to be having weeks where you, you add quite a bit more. You might add 250, 300, 400, but then you're going to let that ride out and you're going to see that, that weight gain be a little bit higher on the first portion of that implementation and then it's going to slow down where across the weeks that you run that plan, the increased weight gain across that three, four week time span should be about 0.25 to 0.5%. And on average, that total surplus would be about 120 kcals per day across that time period that you implemented that change. So if we look at the numbers for Justin's case study and you look at the weight increase across that 26 weeks alongside the caloric increase across those 26 weeks, you get numbers that fall in those ranges almost to a T. You get that 113 kcals surplus per day across that time period from that baseline. And then you also get a rate that falls in between that 0.25 to 0.5%. And you can see just with the picture, like a lot of tissue was added across that phase. So these rates of gain are meant to give you guidelines in order to help you make decisions with the surpluses that you're building into your program. Understand you're not adding 120 kcals to your plan every week to try to keep up with that rate of gain. This is going to look like slightly larger changes and then letting that ride out across different weeks. And then if you look at the off season on macro as a whole, you should see a 0.25 to 0.5% increase where when you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, come here. <laughs> yeah. Say hi to Clinton who's editing this out. <laughs> Say agu. So coming off the back of Justin's case study, remember, the things that are going to impact your all-season is a consistent surplus, watching that rate of gain, and making sure that it falls within that 025 to 0.5% across the macro of the all-season and making sure that when you're looking at these changes on a week to week basis, you're more looking at them in the scope of the off season as a whole, whether you're running 15, 20, 25 week, or even 30 week off season phases before you need to pull back. It will help you to make sure that you're maximizing the muscle gain while eliminating the fat gain across the entire portion of the off season.